All right. You guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves, and then whoever wants to do a recap, go for it, and then we'll continue because oh, you guys are. Yeah, I got the recap. Yeah. yeah, you guys are heading to uh, okay. Constable Harold Cray's office, so I'll let you guys go. I'll go. I'll go last since I'm doing the recap. Okay. <clears throat> we will here. Yeah, I'm playing uh, Giles McMurdoch, G Love for those initiated, uh, uh, a priest of the new cult uh, of the new god and all that. I follow Astrid, and I, I preach her, uh, her, her her beliefs and stuff to those that, that need it, man, like this metal man over here, like her. Her finger bone's here, too, in uh, Last Hope. So they say, man. I, I don't know about anything like that. Well, I, I, I think uh, 13.5.2 might have stolen it, because he does have a finger in a box. <laughs> does he? Okay. But, um... I'm Miss Scarlet Mitz, and I play Honeysuckle, a pixie magician. Looking as beautiful hey. as ever, Miss Scarlet. <laughs> I'm Tyr here, and you're, I am playing Clanker, a clockwork warrior, <clears throat> who seems to be shaping up to be the paladin of the group, even though that's not the way I intended. <laughs> But he just can't be corrupted by the other. He just can't he just can't be corrupted yet. He's just That's following right. protocol. Right. You know what? Clanker was kind of funny last week when uh, one of the folks around town recognized you from years ago. <laughs> that was funny how you just kind of played that off and just ignored it. That was great. I'm sorry. Hey. He has to. He has to ignore his previous life. He he can't acknowledge that because that was a dark time. Him trying to accept what he was now. See, so. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Dragon Bait in chat. I'm playing Nor Sharptooth, the halfling soldier and lumberjack who originally hails from the town of Good Fortune, and I have this week's recap. Last week, or actually last Thursday, on. Shadow of the Demon Lord, Session 2. Whoa. After traveling some distance away from the Orc Slaver's camp, the party decided to camp for the night, having being exhausted from the previous day's struggle for freedom. Oh, Unbeknownst yeah. to, to all but Flanky in the camp, a mischievous pixie honeysuckle decided to play a prank on the party. When two and Norva woke, their underpants were mysteriously missing, while Giles was left completely bare from the waist down. Giles saw the tree above him and proceeded to perform some new jumping jack entertainment for the party, desperately trying to get his pants down, but without success. Uh, Two and Norv eventually found their garments hanging from the oxen's horns, but uh, so theirs were easy to recover. After everyone finally uh, got, dressed, got properly dressed again, the party decided to proceed to the small town of Last Oak. Um, at the town of Last Hope, the party proceeded to Old Hanson's General Store, where we met the proprietor, Mr. Willard Hanson, who was an old man who had much difficulty hearing. Uh, Honeysuckle decided to play some pranks on him while, we, while he was there, and uh, re which really disturbed him, but we managed to calm him down. After completing our business transactions, we headed over to Ribald Reeve Tavern. Norv treated the party to the first round of drinks and some oil for Clanky, and then proceeded to gorge himself on venison. Meanwhile, Giles began to socialize with the town's inhabitants and Mercurio, the proprietor. We met Mayor Klemp at the inn, and Giles relayed the story of how he overcame some 45, or was it 50, or 60, Save or maybe it, was, maybe it was 70 orcs. Countless, a horde of orcs. <laughs> um, to obtain our freedom. And Mayor Clump mentioned an old workshop that was uh, for, that was for sale, and told us that we should check out the uh, job board in town. Um, after dinner, we proceeded outside to check out the job board. But as we were wandering around town, we noticed a young man covered in dirt, blood, and feces busting through the front door of the Temple of the Holy Finger. The young man kept talking about how the mud men were going to get him. After finally calling, calming him down with a puff of my uh, pipe weed, um, we managed. He, man he we managed to get him to talk, and he stated that uh, 
He went to see Father Solomon because he was being tormented by evil spirits, but while he was inside sitting talking to Father Solomon, the father attacked him for no reason, so he stabbed Father Solomon. And he stated that upon stabbing the father, the boy said that his, the father's flesh melted off of his face and nothing but dirt and stone was underneath. So we decided to investigate the temple make sure, and make sure there was no immediate, de immediate uh, need for our assistance. And upon entering the temple, there was evidence of a confrontation having occurred. We decided to explore the temple and two discovered a lockbox full of uh, hun over a hundred copper pieces, which he decided to stash in his backpack. We also found a statue of Astrid pierced by blades and two magical spell scrolls, which Honey saw. Which, which Honeysuckle decided to keep for research purposes. <laughs> Whilst the uh, rest of the party was searching the temple, Giles went to get the Constable Cray, but made time for a very important beer and smoke break. When, it, when we broke into the temple vault, we found a pair of hands that looked like they should have been holding something, but nothing was in them. In the back of the temple, we found some graves, which looked like they had been freshly disturbed. We decided to take the boy, Edgar, over to the constable's office before checking out uh, the tracks which lead away from the graveyard. And that's where we left off. <clears throat> Very nice. Yeah, I wasn't too sure. Uh, good recap, Norv. I wasn't too sure on what uh, Old 2 was going to do. I, I, I didn't know if he was going to dig up that grave or, or what. It sounded like he was actually going to do that. But he just... <laughs> He just, I think he got a little flustered and he never got around to doing it, so. <laughs> I'm at the fence just hollering at him. You know? Yeah, you were. <laughs> what you guys doing back there, man? What, what you doing in the graveyard? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, I love it. So, from what I remember, you guys were heading over to the constable's office to see yeah, Harold yeah. Cray. You had already gone over there one time, uh, Giles. Yeah, or G Love, I guess. Back, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, You're taking, uh,. Edgar to see the constable. So, all right. So, you travel across the you know the small little town of of Last Hope. Let me give you a. Uh, you guys remember the? Uh, let me give you the map of of Last Hope. Okay. Nice, nice little map. Nice little map. Okay. And we we won't have a thirteen five two today. He'll he'll be out. So. No. He may he's get here towards the end. Some heads. He's busting some heads. Yeah, he's he's doing a gank as his team, so he's busting another Belgian team. Their their firms are fighting somewhere, probably in some field or some <laughs> old back road or some a band <laughs> building. So we won't have him. <clears throat> so you guys are at the graveyard. You go over to whatever building you guys want, except for except for the you know this is the uh, the ribald reeve in the middle. So wherever you guys are going to see the constable. You guys make it there, and you know the door's unlocked. You know you knock on the door, and you know you hear a voice that tells you to come on in. The door's open. Right on, brother. I open the door, and uh, you know, we we escort the prisoner inside. I suppose Clanky still got his fucking kung fu grip on him. I believe. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, he's he's right here. Uh, as you guys can see, this is the 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 constable's office. It's not a, a very big office. It's I mean it's it's only about thirty five by thirty five right. feet. It's actually pretty toasty and warm in here. You know he's got a a table with some you know documents on it that he's sitting behind. Uh, he's you know dark skinned man, uh, really good looking, muscularly, but Whoa. he seems like he's getting a he's wearing on the age, so you can see his, his gut is kind of protruding out of his armor a little bit <laughs> got thinning brown hair and uh, you know he welcomes you in and he goes ah so this is this is the rift raft that you, that you wanted to bring in and within this building also you can see that which is lit you can see that there's in the back there are four cells and in these four cells there are some uh, undesirable looking gentleman probably in from from the bar or something like that and uh, the constable Harold he uh, he appears to be injured actually and you know he's uh, got like a a couple of bandages on and, and it looks like you know when he when he kind of moves he's kind of uh, kind of wincing a little bit and it looks like he's uh, definitely uh, gotten hurt 
You know, he tells you, hey, stay away from that dangerous bunch back there. You know, I'm uh, I'm waiting for the magistrate to haul these suckers off to the to the city for a few months of hard labor. They are uh, <clears throat> causing trouble in town. And you know, these guys are all, you know, in bed because you know the sun is is down by this point. Mm-hmm. Probably about I would say about eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. And the, these guys are are sleeping in the bed. Well, <laughs> uh, we had this Edgar here, man, and. Uh... Like I say, uh, my people looked inside. They didn't find the priest's body. Father Solomon is nowhere to be found. But this Edgar story here kind of matches up with what they did find. Uh, Well, that's not like the father. Uh, You know, Father Solomon's usually always at the temple. The doors are always open there. I They're always open something, at the temple. Some the shenanigans finger. are going on with the father, man. Maybe there's some sort of impersonator or something. Uh, I think the father may be in mortal danger. Uh, if he's still alive at all, uh, but this Solomon, this Edgar here, uh, to hear his story, he was just defending himself. I don't know. Deal with him how you will. This is your town, you know. You're the law here, but uh, we we've brought him to you, man. So you can get to the bottom of this thing, and I, I kind of get uh, Clanker in here, and uh, get Clanker to bring him forward or whatnot. I'll, you've heard I'll some bring him forward oh, yeah. over there to you okay I'm here I'm ha- uh, something happened with the Wi-Fi here so yeah. my no camera problem. blinked out no problem you guys have heard some pretty positive things about uh, about the constable too you know f- uh, through Mercurio and other you know other okay. talk you know talking and gossip that seems to be pretty reliable guy. Yeah, he, he definitely is yeah you, you definitely know that he's a good and reliable guy and uh, he's had the post here of town constable for a few years now and before he became the constable of last hope he pretty much spent most of his time uh, running caravans or actually patrolling uh, the roads protecting the caravans you know fighting the fomors okay. and the other beastmen and you know other stranger creatures that would be out in the forest <clears throat> seems like he's well liked really haven't heard anything negative about about him and he's pretty reliable he's definitely reliable and he, and he, and he does his job well so uh, you, from what you've heard uh, and you know like I said last hope is not a very big town right. although it is the largest of all the towns and villages uh, in the wood uh, and you guys uh, think he's a pretty reliable guy from what you've heard so far well I mean uh, you guys were in there man uh, you want to tell the constable like what, what kind of clues? I mean, I never went too far in there. I didn't see. All I saw was like the struggle area in the front. Man, uh, did uh, Norv? Uh, did you or Honeysuckle find out anything further that the constable might need to know about? Well, we when we first entered the temple, we found. So, well, Mister Constable, there, you're not looking so good. Are you sure you're all right? Uh, yeah. I, two days ago, these kind of you know, looks behind him and, and kind of points. He goes, yeah, these guys back there, they they caused a lot of trouble over at the Ribald Reeve and roughed up some of the patrons. I got called to go over there to clean up the mess. And, you know, I get over there, the whole place was erupted in a, in a huge barroom brawl at the end. Everything was getting, you know, it was just crazy. And, uh, you know, I intervened. I, you know, I got these guys out of there, but I got, unfortunately, I got injured. I got I got gibbed with something, a little sore, but it hasn't. This isn't the worst wound that I've ever suffered before, so I'll be all right. I'm it's good to hear that you're all right for the most part. You seemed uh, yeah. fine when we first met you, and uh, she flies off of Giles' shoulder and kind of starts rifling through the paperwork on his chest. Are you visible? No. Okay. But what what in the hell is that sound? And, and unbeknownst to her, she stepped in ink, so she's leaving little inked footprints all over the paperwork. <laughs> We've got a little pixie friend that that that, that accompanies us. Uh, pay her no mind, man. She likes one of those one friends. of those creatures from the Fey, huh? Yeah, those, hey, yeah. She, you gotta watch out for them. Though. She's a good soul. That comes from her. They're pretty devious. Hey, you're you're messing up my paper too. That's that's official <laughs> documentation easy between man, the mayor and myself. Man, baby. Easy, man. Easy. These are I'm the orders reading. to get rid of this riffraff. Now I'm gonna have to rewrite all this stuff again. Uh, 
Look, uh, you're causing some problems, babe. Come on, sit back up here. And I look at my fucking shoulder, and it's got, like, ink spot, ink footprints <laughs> the size of, like, a goddamn ant. Willie, what do you got, a big old corncob pipe or something? I got a real long, I've got one of these long pipes, Dave, you know, that's, that's what I smoke out of. One of those Gandalf pipes. Yeah, like, like a Gandalf <laughs> pipe, exactly. I love it. So, so, as Clanker, you bring you bring uh, Edgar forward, and a couple of the guys they looked the, they had looked to been you know sleeping in the back of the cells, and one of them says, "You little shit, you left us in it, didn't you?" And they're looking right at right at Edgar, and then one of them turns to the other ones and says, "Look, brothers." Good old young Edgar. He's come to visit us in the slammer. And, oh, you know, wow. as, uh, you know, the constable's sitting there, he kind of winces a little bit, and he gets up, and he he stands up and opens up one of his drawers and pull out some uh, some manacles, and he says, I, I remember you. I remember you the other night. And you're, you're the one that got away. <laughs> so, yeah, as... as the uh, thickens, Norv. Yeah, so Clanker. Good thing we held and, on to him. Yeah, so everybody else, how did you guys subdue all Edgar here? What did you do? You, you're just basically just holding on to him, right? Right, Clanker? Right, just pretty much kind of hold up to him, twist his arm up around his back if he tries to get away. It's like, hold up, you're not going anywhere. Looks like we have a two four here. But uh, I, I just want to ask something right quick. This guy has been pretty helpful, though, right? For the tour. Yeah, I will. I'll yeah, he doesn't. Right. He hasn't. He hasn't. He didn't actually seem to be fighting me, trying to struggle to get away or anything. As long as I didn't go back there where, where the other two were, he was cool to stay with me where we were. Yeah, well, that's all kind of changed because he's he's pulled like this long shiv type of dagger out of his boot, <laughs> and oh he and he throws it at the constable, and he takes his dagger oh, and he throws it at the constable. So let's see if it's a. If it hits the constable, <laughs> it's gonna fucking one hit, one hit kill the fucking constable, don't you? I don't know about that, but he, he does. <laughs> he does throw his dagger. Oh boy! <laughs> right? Oh boy! Here we go. Dave's already starting his shit already, isn't he? All right. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? That is Holy like crap. Yeah. Wow. That's there's a, no. No, there isn't, but that's still a 20. That's, that's crazy. All right, so he hits, and he is going to do a little bit of uh, damage. So he's going to do a total of eight damage to, to Constable Cray. Oh, my God. And Constable Cray, he gets hit in the shoulder with this dagger, right in the shoulder, right, right in the area where his neck region is, shoulder, neck, oh, and great. blood is spewing out, and he grabs the dagger, and he's like, uh, uh, and he starts to, you know, breathe really hard. So <laughs> okay, I'll be like Giles. Yeah. I'm going to the sheriff. Clank and get that damn dude, man. I thought you had him, brother. So did I. Roll initiative. Oh. Because at the same time, these uh, vandals that are in the cage are starting to work on this door, trying to oh God. trying to get this door <laughs> open. Oh so God. everybody, roll initiative and put it in the order box, please. Okay, so what do you want to roll? What do we do for initiative? Uh, you oh, and and you remember remember we had talked about this. There's no such thing as initiative in. Yeah, nice. Shadow of the Demon Lord, singular. And I know you guys were a little concerned about the fast turn, the slow turn, uh, and the end of round. So what, what we had discussed was we'll go ahead and we'll do initiative and just you know do a D20 plus your agility. And then we'll do okay. end of round after everybody's gone. So we'll go ahead and we'll do it that way. And then I'll do one initiative for all of the uh, all of the bandits. Oh, this is gonna be fun. So wait, so how do I put it in the order box? Oh. In the on the main tab of your character sheet, there is a, on the more core tab there is a order box. You just put it in there.
Do what? Yeah, on my character sheet, I did that. Yep, on your character sheet. Yep. See, on the more core tab, on the right-hand side, there's an order I found box. It. I found just it. Throw it in there. Or you can take the number and just drag it and throw it in the box. Drag it in there from the chat. Okay. And then it'll pretty much organize everything. And the uh, boy, you guys are rolling horrible, huh? So, oh, except are for you me. Guys, are you guys really <laughs> rolling, rolling bad? Horrible. I thought you said you owe me some fortune. There is. I, uh, I rolled terribly, and my agility sucks. I think a couple of you do have fortune, if I'm not mistaken, right? I rolled a 13, Dave. Yeah. That's gonna count for something. It's better than your freaking bandits over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, let's see, Norv. What is your what, what was your roll? I'll put it in there for you. Um, I got a twenty. God damn! Wow, nice. Edgar, what did you get? Uh, Dave, I you're rolling for me, aren't you, Dave? Oh, that's right, Edgar. I am rolling for you. <laughs> <laughs> is he gonna go with the bandits? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Uh, Norv on your character sheet on that on the the more core tab on the right hand side, the very top tab, in okay. the box on the right combat. There's an order box. That's where you'll just put twenty in there, and then it'll automatically adjust yeah, in the combat yeah, tracker. Yeah. Okay. Or Thanks, you can Dave. take uh, that's no problem. Or you can take your actual roll f from the chat box itself, and you can just kind of drag it in that box, and it'll work. All right, so there we go. Initiatives are, are, are done. Norv, you've got the, the jump on everyone, so you can go ahead and go first. Because you, you saw, you know, this Edgar, he pulls a dagger out and throws it and hits the constable directly in the, the neck slash shoulder region, and blood is, you know, spewing everywhere. So, Dave, uh, there, does each cell over here have its own door, or is there just one door for the whole block? There are uh, there are basically well there's one door and it seems like they're all kind of moving towards the center here and trying to get this door open. They're all kind of like pulling on it and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna move uh, to right there. Okay, and uh, attack. Uh, And uh, is that that's Harold Clay? Uh, where's Edgar? Edgar's up top. He's oh, is he right top. there? Okay. Yeah, you can just hover over the the map, and you, when you hover over the map, you can see the names of who everyone is. Okay, I see. So I'm gonna move. Uh, just trying to try to box him in and uh, make an attack on him with my spear. Sure. Get them, brothers! All the guys in the in the cell, they're they're really ranking on this door. They're trying to, you know, they're shaking this thing as hard as it as it can, and you know, metal's just ranging on metal. You can go and do your attack. Oh, you don't you don't drop it on the token, just drop it in the box. No. Yeah, it's okay. it's not automated like it is in in Five E or Savage Worlds or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, we got to do things a little bit more manually while playing with core RPG, but it still makes it super easy. All right, your attack on uh, Edgar is a miss. He kind of ducks out of the way, and you almost almost kind of hit clanker. All okay, right. and I'll stay right there. Watch it. Okay. So oh, let's go to uh, Giles. You're up now. You got a good uh, jump on everyone. Yeah, I want to tend to this fucking dude. How does he look, Dave? About to drop or if he doesn't that. seek, if he doesn't get uh, medical attention, he might, he might die. Yeah, I'm gonna step up to him and, and cast a minor healing on him. Day. And I'm gonna channel, okay. channel a blue light that kind of emanates from my fucking pipe hand, you know. And uh, uh, I put it on the on the the wound gushing on his shoulder. Man, is the dagger still in there? Did he pull it out or what? No, if he's not, he's uh, he's kind of like. Grabbing at it and it's still sticking swiftly, out between I'm his fingers. I'm going to swiftly and stuff. apply pressure with one hand around the dagger and and, and as you yank it out, pull, pull the dagger out in one motion. You know, sure. And, okay. Uh, and uh, the hand that I'm uh, like 
tamping down with has like the, the blue glow. The magic coming out of it. it. Okay. Yeah, so I'm kind of infusing the healing as I'm pulling the dagger out. I kind of just want to close this thing up at the same time, you know. I, I like I'm that. Not, I'm not an expert at this yet, you know. I'm just, just kind of getting my, my yeah. land legs, as it were, in, in the healing magics. But uh, I'm trying, you know. Sure. So, yeah. So when you when you are doing this 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 healing spell uh, is this one that uh, allows one uh, it, I he guess, gets uh, he gets uh, his healing rate I healing think. rate okay sounds uh, good I like half, that half. or half his healing rate half, half? okay half healing sounds rate. good so he uh, gets healed a little bit and you can you know you kind of you, when you're applying the pressure and you kind of look up it looks like the wound is cauterized quite a bit okay, and it doesn't right. look like it was as bad as before still bleeding right. a little bit yeah, but course, it, it's not spraying like it was you know kill bill style yeah good job good job anything else for you hang you guys on, like brother, the initiative better than the the fast and slow do you guys like that yeah, better or? I, I, I do personally okay it and probably then, makes things less chaotic more familiar yeah. to us exactly it's more yeah. familiar yeah and then we'll just at the end of round you know if you guys quaff any potions we'll still keep within the confines of the mechanics and the potion won't affect you uh, once, until once we get at the end we of the have round. More ongoing effects going on, then that'll come up more. Yeah. It, yeah. It'll be useful then. All right. So let's see. Uh, basically, what's going on is these uh, these four thugs that are in the cage. They're they're working away at this at this door. They're you know they're beating on it. They're kicking it, and you can see that the whole wall is the whole you know the whole wall of bars is starting to move a little bit and you can see that the brackets on the top of the wall are kind Coming of rattling stuff, a little yeah. bit yeah they're really putting everything they can in this i mean they're they're really trying to to get out of this thing i mean they see their they see their opportunity and they're going to fucking take it yeah out. exactly is that a weapon rack up in the top right corner it is yeah it's got some swords and whatnot on it yeah mm -hmm. don't let them get to the weapons if they get out guys or the so, key. So lit, brother. They can't reach the key. What key, right. anyway? Edgar's no, up. Lock them in, right? it, it's gonna be useless to lock them in when they break the freaking doors off the hinges, baby. <laughs> but Edgar can get the key and let them out. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Take down Edgar then. Good night, man. Wow, how astute of you. Edgar, he reaches into his other boot for another dagger and he is going to try to shiv Clanky. And he says, get off of me you big moldy mess of metal and he jabs at you with a dagger. Wow. Opposite end today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, he... Uh, this is horrible. Clink, clink, clink. Yeah. So, I believe that. Yeah, there's no penalty on. Well, I don't think there was any penalty attacking you. So, if there's any penalties with Banes or anything like that attacking you guys, let me know. All right. So Harold Cray. He gets up and staggers. I mean, he's staggering. Easy he's kind of. Well, easy, he easy. nods to you. And he goes over towards, uh, you know, these guys and, and pulls his weapon. And he tells Shit. them to stand down. Uh, and if they do not stand down, then he will finish the job that he probably should have finished the other night. <laughs> and uh, he pulls out a, a beautiful sword. I mean, this, this sword is... Uh, uh, got gems on it that are basically encrusted into the hilt of this sword. Definitely a sword of beautiful quality. I mean, it's not anything that's rusted like you would have seen, you know, hanging off of the cutthroats inside of the the ribald reeve or the general that equipment like store. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So he pulls the sword, and, you know, and, and sparkles come off of this sword, and you know, like a curved scimitar blade. And he goes, "I will finish the job the other night if you do not stand down." And these guys kind of look at him, and, and they, you know, a couple of them kind of back off, and a couple more are, are shaking these bars, and then another one backs off, and then all four of them kind of back up and and say, "Whoa, 
We don't want no trouble, Mr. Constable. We were just trying to get out and help you. And then one of them says, yeah, yeah, we were just 